Are you ready to turn your potential into performance? If so, you're in the right place. This is the Coach Brew Show, and here's your host, John Brubaker. This is the one type of business that consistently outperforms all others. Welcome to the Coach Brew Show, Performance Report, episode number 508. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash coachbrew. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. That's audibletrial.com slash Coach Brew. Now, there is one type of business that consistently outperforms all others. And I was going to have a very special guest on the podcast, someone I interviewed for an article I wrote. And unfortunately, we did the interview in a crowded restaurant. And the recording had so much background noise, I couldn't possibly salvage it without completely uh, completely annoying you. So, um, unfortunately, I don't have a guest for this episode, but um, we're going to break it all down for you. This one type of business that does consistently outperform all others. Anyway, nobody fights for anything quite like they fight for family. Wouldn't you agree? I think it's why so often you hear high-performing teams and organizations refer to themselves as a family or a band of brothers, and they strive to treat each other that way. There's nothing you wouldn't do for your loved ones, right? Whenever we think there's nothing left in the tank, We're always able to muster up a little bit more for the people in our life we love. Family members, typically. Well, according to Credit Suisse, family businesses outperform their non-family counterparts and contribute over 50% of the GDP in America. Why? Well, I think for starters, family businesses are more trusted There's a ton of research uh, on trust today in business, and family businesses are far more trusted than public or state-owned companies. You know, when it's your name on the business, there's a greater commitment to quality. You're also more invested in the brand when it bears your name. There's never, that's, that's just never been more apparent to me then in my interview with Casey and Melinda Donahue. And Casey was going to be uh, my guest on the podcast, but as I mentioned before, the audio quality was just too bad with all the background noise. Uh, the Casey Donahue Band is an independent country band from Texas that's made a name for themselves nationally. You've got to check out their music. There'll be a link in the show notes where you can invest in some of their music. Uh, you're going to love it. It's just uh, it's a stadium status family business in a volatile industry that is rife with change, the music industry. And the more I learn about the music industry, the more I realize it mirrors the book industry. So whether you're a musician, a speaker, or an author, typically your agent takes 10% cut and your manager gets 15%. That's kind of standard operating procedure. So right out of the gates, before you've even turned on a mic, sold a book, or sold an album, you're going to gross about 25% less as a result. And that's not even including billable hours management will charge you. Because you know the meter, that meter's always running, folks. And when it comes to management, you're not their only client. They typically represent you and dozens of others just like you. So how do you know if they always have your best interest at heart? Well, it's been my experience. They often don't. 
And you might be thinking, I'm not a musician, I'm not an author, I'm not a speaker. How does this apply to me? It absolutely applies to you when you look at the service professionals that you use who also represent and work for a multitude of other people just like you. So how do you know they always have your best interest at heart and they're putting your business first? You just don't. They have too many agendas, too many different agendas, because they have too many different clients. And at the end of the day, that means they have no real allegiance to anyone. So this begs the question, really, the only correct answer is to hire someone for whom it isn't just business. It's personal. When you work with family, you eliminate an awful lot of conflict of interest. As is the case with Casey Donahue, since forming the band, his wife, Melinda, has been his manager. To quote Casey, he said, Every day she wakes up laser-focused, fighting for the exact same vision as me. I wouldn't have that if anyone else were in that role. And that is so true. It's another great reason to keep your circle tight. You know, there's an old quote, uh, keep your circle tight, four quarters, uh, it's worth far more than 100 pennies. Yeah, it's 100 cents either way, but the point is, um, there's greater value in smaller numbers. I think Casey's been really wise to keep his circle tight, his circle of friends and family and business associates, because when you do, you don't have to question allegiances or motives of people who might not share your same vision and priorities. It becomes a non-issue. I caught up with Casey over lunch before their show in Boston, and I got to observe something really interesting. While there might not be a blood bond, great bands and great teams share the same qualities as a close family. It stands to reason. If you think about it, you spend more time at work with your colleagues than you do at home a lot of the time. And in their case, you travel on a 400-square-foot bus and spend 24 hours a day with 10 different personalities. You darn well better enjoy spending time together. I had lunch with Casey and his bass player, Steve Stone, and it was just fun to sit there and watch them literally finish each other's sentences during the interview. They just played off of each other so well. It was almost like they knew what the other person was going to say, and and it's fascinating. You know, Steve was the first person to join the band. He's been with Donahue for about 15 years, and it, it's, it makes a ton of sense to have that much chemistry and have, you know, colleagues who really you treat like family and consider family at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, by anyone's standards, Casey Donahue Band is a wildly successful family business a business that employs 13 people and the band, which in its own way is part of the family. Uh, this fall, they released uh, The Wild Ride, which is their 15-year anniversary album. 15-year anniversary. Think about that. 15 years is a remarkable milestone for any business, considering the statistics. 20% of all businesses fail within the first year, 50% of all businesses fail within five years, and 70% fail within 10 years. I often say success leaves clues. So I asked Casey, what do you attribute your success and longevity to? And he shared five things with me. I'm just going to break them down for you real quick in order. Number one, love what you do. You've got to love what you do. Number two, have a system. I say this all the time on the podcast, and if you read my books, if you can't describe what you're doing as a system, you probably don't know what you're doing. Uh, his third secret to their success was do as much as you can yourself until you can't anymore. And I think that's a trap we see a lot of entrepreneurs fall into. They want to delegate and outsource as much as possible right away. Well, then you become hostage to other service professionals and you don't know how to operate your business on a day-to-day -day basis in a lot of cases. That's a recipe for failure if you're not careful.
Number four, watch your business and understand your customers. You've got to listen to your audience, whatever kind of audience you have. Understand your customers, how they want to consume your product or service or experience. Number five, bet on yourself and invest in yourself. This is uh, this is probably the most important piece of advice for any entrepreneur listening. Is number one, you know you got to bet on yourself because no one's going to bet on you if you don't. But secondly, you've got to invest in yourself every single day. Are you getting coaching? Are you investing in your business? Before you do anything else with those profits at the end of the day, what what are you really doing to invest back into yourself and to your brand? You know, it's more than just a business to the Donahues, and they're in really good company. Uh, I found it kind of ironic that right down the road from where we met up uh, in Norwell, Massachusetts, lives the Zildjian Symbol Company. And it's the most iconic and oldest family business in the United States. It also has roots in the music industry. That's kind of the, the ironic part. But the Zildjian is nearly 400 years old. So think about like 70% of all businesses fail in 10 years. The Zildjian symbol company is almost 400 years old. It survived 14 generations. Well, how have they done that? You know, interestingly enough, they do almost exactly what Casey outlined for me as those five secrets to his success and longevity. Zildjian maintains an incredible commitment to excellence. They invest in themselves. And they control almost 65% of their market and have survived, get this, the Great Depression, two world wars, and literally have outlived empires on this planet. So just like Casey and Melinda Donahue, they've kept their circle of, of people really tight as well. And they have this proprietary mix of metals that makes the world-class Zildjian cymbal sound. And it's such a closely guarded secret within the family business that the current CEO and vice president didn't even learn about it until they're in their 30s and were deemed to be dedicated enough to the business to kind of be let in on the, the secret recipe. Think about that. That's, that's wild. But both Zildjian and the Casey Donahue band thrive because they play the long game. They not only bet on themselves, but also proactively invest in themselves. And you contrast that with most businesses today not just big corporations, most businesses, they're trying at all costs to make quarter earnings look good for shareholders, or they're just looking at you know this week, this month, this quarter. But Zildjian and the Casey Donahue Band, they're thinking long-term. They've built something sustainable that grows and evolves over time. And I think there's a lesson in that for everyone as you're listening to this. You know, success leaves clues. So take a page from their playbook. And if you think, well, you know, I'm not a family business. Actually, we all are in a way. Your work is your signature. Think about this. Your work is your signature. And your signature contains your family name. So it's in your best interest to think of yourself as a family business regardless of who your employer is. I'll give you those five keys to Casey's success real quick. Love what you do. Have a system. Do as much as you can yourself. Watch your business and understand your customers. And lastly, and most importantly, bet on yourself and invest in yourself. So as we're wrapping up the Coach Brew podcast, uh, episode number 508, I want to encourage you to uh, check out Casey Donahue's music. Uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes, you can pull it up on iTunes as well, or you can go to CaseyDonahue.com and find his music there. Thanks for tuning in to the Coach Brew podcast. 
Uh, We will catch you next week. Thanks for listening to The Coach Brew Show. If you're not currently subscribed to the podcast, sign up now on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. And for more information to turn your potential into performance, head on over to coachbrew.com now.